If you've ever heard of the Gaza Strip, you've probably seen horrific images of war, destroyed or bombed out buildings, or tragic deaths in the mainstream media. What I'm going to guess, though, is that you have never seen the side of Gaza that we're gonna show you today. Stay tuned, this is the Joshua and Caleb Report. In a world plagued with anti-Israel propaganda, Hoyavel presents the Joshua and Caleb Report. A positive voice of truth, straight from Israel's heartland. In a world of negativity and fake news, every Christian should be connected to the life and positivity that Israel brings to the world. Luke, I'm very excited about this show. We've got a lot of really great things uh, to talk about. But first, we want to thank uh, Jason Stravers for his uh, gift as a patreon now we've got our That's patrons right. are joining us and we're very grateful for that because that helps us get content out more and it helps us do a lot better job we need the quality got to stay up and we got to keep this information going out because like today we're going to give you guys some information that you never would have dreamed i'm sitting there literally when i'm looking i'm getting the content today and i'm like what in the world uh, are we actually seeing so stay tuned guys for this that's right and by the way if you want to help us produce more content straight from israel's biblical heartland you can go to patreon.com slash joshua and caleb just like jason join us on the monthly team for 10 25 50 dollars a month and literally help us bring this show to the entire world by the way if you have not subscribed on youtube make sure you hit that subscribe and hit the bell Leave us a comment. We get so many comments. Love the engagement down there. And um, you can subscribe wherever else you listen. If you listen on a podcast platform, remember, it's always free. And by the way, the uh, more content than just this show is all at joshuaandcaleb.com, and it's 100% free because of people like you that are helping us on Patreon and at joshuaandcaleb.com. You can also donate there. That's how we're able to keep all of this free. So thank you so much for helping us out. Josh, I went to Google... And I know you did too, but did. for starters, I typed in photos of Gaza. I didn't spend any time. I downloaded the first six photos that came up, and this is what they look like right here. Okay, photo number one. Okay, look, doesn't look like maybe a normal high rise city, right? Photo number two. And Luke, and you're being all fair here. You showed that first photo because that was literally that what was we saw. the first photo okay, that came first, up on Google. Literally, first right. six. Did not manipulate okay. yeah. this at all. Okay, second photo. Um, a, a bomb or a rocket or something, missile hitting a, a building, okay, a bombed out area. Um, another bombed out area, more bombed out area, more bombed out area, a child, you know, carrying his little brother through the streets. Okay, so those are the first six photos that came off of okay. Google when it comes to Gaza. Yeah. I'm going to guess with probably 99.9% .9 accuracy that if you have ever seen images or videos of Gaza in the mainstream media or on Google or on YouTube, you saw something similar to what I just showed you. Joss is gonna show you some other photos that you might not ever have seen before, so stay tuned. This is gonna be absolutely mind-blowing. Luke, let's start out with what the fake news says. And, and literally, I've, I've, okay, I just said it. Uh, Washington Post is fake news? Okay, if Washington Post has the nerve to say what they say, what we're going to read here, then yes, it's fake news. It says, uh, quote, Gaza City is more densely populated than Tel Aviv and other major world cities like London or Shanghai, and much more so than the areas of Israel that surround it. Okay, that sounds like uh, pretty like, it sounds like they got some facts. Right. Okay, we're going to check it, but we're going to continue on. We're just going to read through some, uh, some fake news, and then we're going to just completely bust it, like bust it. <laughs> I love it that we can bust it because really that's just totally fake. It's not true at all. Okay, You're Reuters correct. says uh, about 1.5 million Palestinians live in Gaza, more than half of them refugees from past wars with Israel. Gaza has one of the highest population densities and demographic growth rates in the world. Once again, the, uh, the Washington Post and Reuters believe that Gaza is one of the most densely populated areas in the world. Okay. We're going to check gonna that, right? Out. All right. We're Are, check you that. Sure, Are you sure, Reuters? Washington Post. Washington Post. <laughs> Are you sure? Okay. This is your chance. You no, wrote kidding. it. It's not live. They, they did write it. Yeah. I mean, they believe that what they're saying. Maybe. Maybe. I'm not sure they believe it. Washington Post, the Israeli communities that surround Gaza Strip are far less dense. Farmland dots the landscape, contrasting with the crowded skyline of high-rise apartment buildings along much of the Gaza Strip. Okay. Um, just no. Josh, We're going to get into this in a little bit. Tell us how far it is from... Because... Yeah, I'm... 
this is not a big area we're talking about. And we're going to get into the facts here in a second. I don't know if people know this, but Israel is not like a humongous. We're not talking about Texas. Israel is very right. small in itself. Gaza Strip is another very small region inside of a very small region of Israel, mm-hmm. next to very large Arab the Arab countries yeah. like Egypt. Yeah. Okay, we're going to talk about that. But literally, Tel Aviv is only 40 miles. So what in from the Gaza. world are they talking about? 40 miles from Gaza. That's a, a huge city. We're not talking about all the other small cities that well, are in between it, yeah. Tel 80, Aviv and 80% Gaza. 80% of Israel's population lives on their in their coastal region, right? right? Something Which basically 70 goes, or 80%. So that that is, like, Gaza is on the coast. Yeah. So you're talking about 70 to 80% of Israel's population all within that area. Yeah, and if anybody can recollect just a few weeks ago when rockets were flying, they were flying people, into yeah. Israel's most populated Tel Aviv. area. The people of Tel Aviv were running to the bomb shelter. And Luke, we're going to talk about that. And uh, Washington Post, once again, roughly twice the size, this is what it says, it says uh, roughly twice the size of the District of Columbia, the impoverished Palestinian territory, is surrounded by Israel on almost all sides. Uh, kind of interesting right. how they could say almost all sides. I mean, there's a... Egypt is a really big place there that yeah. also must take, and I know the world refuses to really put any, uh, any like uh, even a notion that that Egypt should be held responsible for anything on the Egyptian border. Now, well, okay. And by the way, Egypt also keeps their border crossing into Gaza closed. Hmm. And you'll wonder why. Yeah. And people only talk they about. They might Israel. have some similar concerns. Okay. So that's just Gaza. some little fake news that we're going to kick off. This is what the world yeah. believes. If you use your imagination. You think of the Gaza Strip, like what images come to your mind? Might be influenced by media, right? You might imagine poverty, squalor, bombings, fires, you know, death, carnage, hospitals, right? Those are probably some of the things that would come to your imagination. Well, you don't even have to look too hard. You just Google it on the internet and that's what you see. Right. Yeah. Because that is, that that's is, what's promoted. that's what you've been fed. The proper pick up your paper. You've been fed. Just pick up your paper and that's yeah. what they're promoting. Yeah. Luke, on, uh, Josh, talk about this population density. Is it actually true? This, Gaza this, is one of the most uh, densely populated cities, or and I, maybe that's where you should start. Is Gaza a city, or so this is it is, an area, yeah. or is it a country? So this is where people use uh, crazy stats, and they use and they they misconstrue things to make it look like something it's not. So when you see things like uh, most populated city or whatever, you know the high, the the usually they're smart enough not to actually say that because that is so far from the truth. It's not even not even close to anywhere true. Right. Gaza, the only way they can make a stat work is as if they make Gaza a country of itself. Because a country, when, you, when, you, when you're looking at countries, the demographic or the land mass of a country is much larger. Right. And so if you look at a city, the city limits are very populated. Countries are not populated as cities are. Correct. Right? Okay. So if you look at, at Gaza, not as a city, what, it's actually more like a city. Gaza mm-hmm. is a very small region that has been uh, designated off, and there's lots of little cities within it, but it's basically a city. Now, if you, if you look at that and you say Gaza is a country, then you could say that the demographic uh, for that country is so high compared to other places because the landmass is very small. Right. If you take a, a city, and, and this may be complicated for people to understand, but I'll, we'll explain it better in just a second, um, then if you actually take a city, maybe Gaza is, is uh, somewhat uh, similar similar populated. Okay, right. but we're going to look at that because this is their, their claim that, that Gaza is, is so populated. But if you just go on Google, and we're using Google a lot today, Luke, just because Which, everybody goes way, on Google. Which, by the way, I always mean to mention it, but we actually do include all of our source links in the description below, YouTube, podcast platforms. If you want to check out where we're getting all of our information from, just go to the description. You can check out all of the links as to where we get all of our information. Okay, so to make that clear, if you're looking at, at Gaza as a city, Gaza City, this is what they're all talking about. Mm-hmm. If you're actually looking at it as a city, let's go to Google. We're not looking at it as a country because, Luke, it's not a country. Right. Gaza is not a country. Well, Gaza is a, a combination of several cities that's in a very small area. And you're gonna, we're going to get the actual stats here in a second. Type in list of cities worldwide by population density. Okay. okay. Just type that in. What comes up? Gaza is nowhere on the list. So how can you be saying that Gaza is the most pop, the most? This right. is what we just read. Fake news says it's one of the most populated areas in the world. It doesn't even show up on the first 68 that show up on Google. It's nowhere to be found in any of those. Probably not in the first 100, if you could find that list. The most you could find was 68. 68. But looking at the, the, you know, the equations it's, that are used there, kind of the, how the statistics go, it's probably not in the top 100. Luke, and here's the most ironic thing. The most ironic thing, and that is, is that, Israel actually has two cities that are in the top. Well, one of them is B'nai Brak. That's the eighth most populated city in the entire world. 
There's another city named uh, Givatim, Givatim that is next to Tel Aviv that ranks at 50. Okay. Israel has two cities in the world that rank at the most populated cities in the entire world that, guess what? Rockets from Gaza landed inside of these cities that are actually on the most populated list in the world. Gaza right. is not one. Gaza shoots rockets into these cities, Israeli cities, that actually, Google, world, wake up. Rockets were actually falling into, uh, and it was not military targeted situations. This is a, a uh, indiscriminate mm -hmm. rocket just bl blowing it over, right. no telling where it's going to go, into the most densely populated areas in the world. Right. Okay, so... Are you saying that fake news? The, uh, the news out there might actually be, the they truth might actually be flipped completely on its head. 100% around backwards, Luke. Literally, they're saying the most populated place in the world is Gaza. Well, that's just not true. The most populated place, number eight. Right. They were lobbing rockets into one of the most populated places in the world. Number eight in the world, Luke. I'm not even saying Gaza doesn't even show up in what we said, like the first 68 for sure. But it doesn't even, it's not even close to the bottom list right. of that 68. It's probably not even in the first 100 or even mm -hmm. go down to two or 300. Uh, literally, it's not even on the so map. We'll be right back with the show, but first I have to tell you about the Christians Meet Israel 30-day devotional. Whether or not you're an avid Israel lover or just beginning to love Israel, this easy-to-read book is for you. It includes many of the promises where God talks about Israel in the Old and New Testaments. Each day has a short explanation, space for taking notes, and a thought-provoking question at the end. Written by Zach Waller, this devotional is something that is very much needed for the body of believers worldwide right now. You can get your copy by clicking the link in the description below or just order it on Amazon. It's the perfect devotional to go through by yourself or with your whole family. We promise it'll cause you to look at Israel in an entirely new light. You'll see God's land and people through his eyes and the lenses of scripture. Purchase Christians Meet Israel by Zach Waller on Amazon or click the link in the description below. Use promo code Joshua and Caleb for a special listener only discount. So let's talk about the actual statistics of Gaza, how big it is, and then Gaza City, which is a city inside Gaza. The yeah. actual um, statistics of Gaza is that the territory is 25 miles long, and it's anywhere from 3.7 to 7.5 miles wide, yeah. and has a total area of 141 square miles. Now, when you get into how many Palestinians <clears throat> live in Gaza, that's where it gets a little tricky. A lot of people say 2 million. Uh, Reuters in the beginning of the show said 1.5 million. That was a few years ago, so it could be slightly higher than that. What would you say, Josh? How many people actually live in Gaza? Well, what I and Luca got to go into this a little bit because most people take the and I, this is also something that baffles me. One thing that baffles me is that the world just believes Hamas. You shouldn't right. believe Hamas. You well, it's, to, it's, to make it clear too, we're gonna have a quick history lesson here in a minute too, but. Uh, <laughs> The governing authority in Gaza is Hamas, right. which is a designated terrorist organization in many, many countries around the world, including the United States, including Australia, um, the European Union, and the United Nations, at least at one time, and I probably still to this day, have des basically them designated as terrorist organization as well. And they're the only ones that we can rely on to provide statistics when it comes to to Gaza. Well, Luke, nobody else is going to go in there. It's a, it's well, yeah, a Hamas it's difficult to get terrorist in and out too. group that controls and it's dangerous. the place. Yeah. Okay, so Luke, there's a few things that we have to bring up uh, when we're talking about uh, these stats, because there are things that we do know for sure. Right. We know for sure that the PA here in our area that we're very familiar with, uh, Luke, you and I have not been in, inside Gaza. We have uh, staff members that have been inside Gaza. Mm -hmm. uh, our, I'd love to go. I would love to go. And I think with our uh, actually status of the show, we probably would not make it out. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm, I'm thinking we should just, you know, maybe we should just look from the outside, which we did. And we're showing people today. What, okay. Here's a couple things with the population inf uh, that's totally inflated. Uh, we see that here in Judea and Samaria. Right. Here's a few notes, and I'm not talking about Gaza here. I'm talking about Judea mm -hmm. and Samaria, and we're going to use of why that. We, of why we know that numbers are typically inflated. It's the same group like of folks. It's right. the same kind of stuff going on. So this is what's going on here in Judea and Samaria. Overseas residents are counted uh, in the number of right. of people that are actually uh, li living here. Okay, so, so that's, that's double. double. Um, we have East Jerusalem Arabs are counted twice. 
Right. Okay, that's this is a huge thing because a lot of people live in East Jerusalem, a lot of Arabs. Arabs who married Israeli Arabs are also counted twice. Um, we have a 32% artificial infl- in, uh, inflation. inflation of Palestinian births. That's just, right. it's, it's documented that they inflated those numbers, just did it, just because, 32%. Uh, and fertility rates have dropped from nine births per woman in, ni- in the 1960s to 3.02 births in 2021. We've had a massive decrease in the birth rate, so this is also affecting the numbers. And as in many uh, leftist arenas in the world, uh, people, they don't like to count the dead people anymore. Yeah. <laughs> they just don't want to count the dead people. So what you're so saying, they're saying they yeah. don't count the dead people. So what you're saying is these are facts that we know of how the facts. Palestinian Authority operates in the West Bank, yeah. in East Jerusalem. And as we'll see in a history lesson here in a second, Palestinian Authority is actually the very mild, moderate version of Hamas. And yeah. Palestinian Authority used to rule and govern Gaza yeah. before it was taken over by Hamas. There's a lot so of that threats. being said, you 100% cannot trust facts and statistics that are put out by the terrorist organization Hamas. For sure. So with the just the things I've mentioned, uh, calculating that into the uh, Judea and Samaria statistics, st- uh, d- uh, demographic statistics, uh, it's actually half. Right. They propose that there's 3 million Arabs that live inside the Judea Samaria region of Israel. Right. Well, just adding the false information that we already know about these statistics, we actually get to 1.5 million right. that live inside Judea and Samaria. So if the world if is, we take the yeah. same math, so the world says 1.5 to 2 million Arabs in Gaza. Literally, Luke, there could be less than a million people in Gaza. Quite potentially. And maybe we should more than half of it, because obviously Hamas is a terrorist organization that should probably be trusted even less than the Palestinian Authority. Which, Luke, I, when you see numbers, when you see death tolls, when you see right. all these things, don't believe the numbers. There's nobody that's saying. Israel has never come out and said, when we talked a few weeks ago about the children that were killed in right. Gaza, we don't, we don't want children to die. Nobody wants children to die. And that was very clear with the IDF. They said, no, children, we, we want to keep that... Where's the facts behind these children's deaths? Right. We really do not have it. It's only propagated by Hamas. So when we can't believe a, a, a demographic figure, we also can't, I'm saying we cannot believe any stats that we see out of there. And we that's this is factual information. Josh, what else can we not believe? Might be images that you see on mainstream media. Can we take a look at that? Luke, so I've got these things that I and we've been. T- <laughs> I the demographic thing has always puzzled me. I'm like, okay, it can't be true. Whenever I hear a number like that, I'm like, right. okay, it can't be true. And there's very factual information. The editor report, you guys click it down below, watch through this stuff. Very documented information on what we just talked about. The next thing is, is that I just said, I'm just gonna go to Google. Google Maps, Google Earth. Just go on there and just take it, take your own tour. So that's what I did. I, I, I did that today. Uh, Luke, let's just throw up let's some pull pictures. This up. Let's, let's throw up some pictures. Okay. Uh, guys, this is the uh, Rafa. This is in Gaza. Rafa is a small little city there in Gaza. Um, it's a roundabout. Um, and I just want everybody to just stop and look at this roundabout. Do you, is there anything, like, first off, I wouldn't have thought by the media, that, especially Luke, you showed before, that this roundabout would have existed in Gaza. Right. Um, but in the middle of this roundabout in Rafa, in Gaza, uh, is a rocket. There's a rocket sitting on top. This is the this Some is like the guy. statue, you know, of like we have statues in America yeah. in our in our uh, Statue of Liberty. Yeah, you know, we have like the like, rocket of death. Well, even in, in Gaza. Our, even on it's our roundabouts. Well, it's basically the symbol of Hamas because that's what they do. They shoot rockets, rockets. at Israel. So it's might as well be their national flag in Gaza, right? You know, in Tennessee, Luke, we have like these in our city centers. We have these little, you know, downtown. You know, and we have mm-hmm. a, uh, a, uh, it's you know, some you know, per- the Civil famous War, Civil War right, person yeah, like or that. something like. Okay, so in 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 Gaza, there's a rocket. This is their yeah. symbol, a rocket. They don't have like a a uh, you know a, a statue of some hero or something. No, they just got right. a rocket. Yeah. They just got a rocket. If okay. they did have a statue of a hero, it would be a terrorist. <laughs> it would be a terrorist. For sure. yeah. Okay, so now let's uh, check out Rafa. Okay, whoa. Aerial Not photograph of Gaza? Aerial photograph Wait, of Gaza. Wait, this is the town, the city of Rafa? This is the, the okay. city of Rafa. Well, what do you know? I would never have thought that that existed there. Would you look? Right. Just no, wouldn't. probably not. Okay, let's go. Let's see if they got a mosque. Whoa, nice mosque. My gracious. Pretty good looking. Okay, and then, uh, whoa. Now, Luke, you got to be Those kidding me. There is beautiful. flowers in Gaza? There is flowers? Well, before Israel pulled out in the 2005 disengagement, yeah. Gaza was famous 
famous for Israeli agriculture that was yeah. exported all around the world, including yeah. beautiful greenhouses, which the Palestinians destroyed. Yeah. But agriculture is still something that is done by Palestinian, you know, honest, peace-loving Palestinians in Gaza. So, yes, you should find some agriculture in Gaza. Luke, but there's enough room? Yeah. Hey, <laughs> right, whoa, you mean for a field? There's a field of flowers in Gaza. Okay. I, you know, I just, I don't want to make light of this. Like there's, there's people that are talking real stuff. This is real. I'm right. just, I just, this is a picture from Gaza. Okay. Um, what else do we see here? We got uh, beach beautiful front, uh, uh, beach. That mosque. literally looks like wow. a resort area to me. It's like, that isn't, okay. I just, that if you also, guys are this, baffled this like This also I am, looks like a resort. Okay. Yeah. It's gotta be a that's hotel. The, or... uh, yeah. That's a, the white chalet. Wow. Mm. Um, I wonder if Airbnbs are cheap in Gaza. I know. This looks like a great vacation spot. We have the, oh, here's uh, another one. the Grand Chalet, the White Chalet. Yeah. Okay. What in the world? Okay. Another aerial Gaza. Photograph. Okay, Luke, this is Gaza City. Doesn't, I mean, doesn't look that crowded. Looks like a normal city. I mean, it looks nice. This is Gaza City aerial view. At least that's what Google says, guys. This right. is, I just literally went on and took these off Google. Gaza City. What else we got? How about the Blue Beach uh, Resort over there on the side? Yeah, you see that? That's a resort. What is a resort doing? Uh, this nice building. I don't know what that is. I just thought that. I was like, wow, that's pretty nice. Uh, the Cedar Restaurant and Cafe. Oh, like somebody's going mall. to a restaurant. Somebody's drinking coffee. This looks like some normal life. This the next Roots photo. Hotel. Shoo. What in the world? That that's just doesn't look like beautiful. what we've heard. Uh, how about the University of uh, Palestine? Some kind of stadium. Stadium yeah. there. Uh, how about the Islamic University of Gaza? Wow. Uh, nice, Luke. Um, and a theme park? Maybe Gaza has a theme park? It, they do. I, I, it's not maybe. This, <laughs> I, It's real. Yeah. It's real stuff that I literally took. Hey, you guys should go to Google Earth or just go to Google Earth or Google Maps. Just go to Gaza. See what you find. I mean, we're not I, making this up. We're not making it up. Um, and I would tell you, Luke, please don't pool? go to Gaza. Well, <laughs> Well, like, I'm not sure if you can right now. And you probably can't anyway. But yeah. just use the sources we have. Okay, look, here's the uh, Champions Club. Yeah. Champions Club. Wow. Another restaurant. Cafe. Fine dining by the sea. Look at this. This is a le legit like place. I mean, okay. Yep. And uh, to, to just to finish it all off here, Equestrian Club, Luke? Like, hmm. Yeah. Equestrian Club? I actually really like horses. Guys, I hope yeah. you get the point. We just went through a, an incredible uh, slides here. That literally, I just spent a, a few hours uh, just online and looking around and just seeing what I was like. I really got engulfed in it, Luke, because yeah. I was like, "Whoa, I can go down into the streets of Gaza and like right. zigzag through the streets yeah. and, and Google." And Earth I mean, and, what we're saying, go check it out for yourself. You've got to see this. Look online, and for the information and the facts and statistics we're quoting, source links in the description below. Josh, we don't have a lot of time left, but I do want people to understand. Okay, quick, quick history lesson. Yeah. Okay, what is Gaza and what happened in recent history there? Okay, Gaza was ruled by the Ottoman Empire until World War One. Yeah. The whole area, right, was ruled by the Turkish Ottoman Empire. Um, after World War One, became part of the League of Nations Mandate of Palestine under British rule. 1947, the UN, uh, when the mandate ended, UN agreed to a partition plan for Palestine, which called for Gaza to be part of the Arab state, but... Arabs rejected and no. declared six countries declared war on Israel, tried to wipe them out. Israel won the war, but when the fighting stopped, Egypt ruled Gaza. Okay, Jordan ruled the West Bank. Egypt ruled Gaza. Yeah. Um, it was under Egyptian military rule. Basically, from 1949 uh, to 1967, there was a little break there where Israel um, regained it, uh, but then gave it back to Egypt. After the Six-Day War in 1967, Israel regained control of Gaza. Okay. Oslo Accords come, along, come around in 1993. Yeah. Israel, according to the Oslo Accords, Israel begins a transfer of, of authority in 1994 to the Palestinian Authority, which came out of the Palestine Liberation Organization, which is the PLO. Um, the Palestinian government, led by Yasser Arafat, who's the leader of the PLO, he had a really hard time. And this is where a lot of the problems in Judea and Samaria and Gaza come from even today, because uh, Hamas is a terrorist organization. They're not. They they don't function as a government. And the Palestinian Authority yeah. is almost a terrorist organization. They barely function as a government, right? Um, so Yasser Arafat, even in the 1990s, when they started transferring uh, power over to him to rule in Gaza, he had a terrible time with um, economy, people, public support, um, Israel's working with Israel to get you know troops withdrawn and things like that. Um, and also, I thought this was interesting: the threat of terrorism from mi mi militant Muslim groups such as Islamic Jihad and Hamas. 
the Palestinian Islamic Jihad and Hamas still operate in Gaza today. Yeah. And Hamas, as we're going to see in a sec- second, took over uh, Gaza. Okay, In an effort to end all the fighting and, and make things more peaceful, Israeli minister, Prime Minister Ariel Sharon um, decided to withdraw Israel from the Gaza Strip, and that happened in 2005. Okay, Well, the Palestinian Authority was supposed to govern the Gaza Strip, right? Mm-hmm. After Israel completely withdrew, it only took a year, maybe less, for the um, Hamas terrorist organization to completely take over, kick out Fatah. Fatah is PA. Palestinian Authority, yeah. which controlled them. And since then, they've basically been gone from Gaza, okay? Um, people didn't like Fatah at first because they had dominated Palestinian politics since the 1950s. But they thought maybe at first Hamas would be better. Hamas has been way, way, way worse. And um, as soon as Hamas took over control of Gaza, they were condemned by the United States, European Union, and Israel. And those three uh, bodies actually put sanctions on the Gaza Strip. You think Mm -hmm. Israel is the one sanctioning the Gaza Strip. When Hamas took over in 2006, the European Union and the United Nations, together with Israel, actually imposed sanctions because... Hamas is a designated terrorist organization, yeah. okay? So that's actually what happened. Now, to finish off with a couple of uh, quick real, what I call real Gaza facts, right? <laughs> the real ones. In politically stable times, yeah. in normal times, as much as one-tenth of the Palestinian population in Gaza travels into Israel on a daily basis for work. Okay, Luke, okay? you're saying there's not... They're actually employed What's this blockade in stuff? Israel. Actually employed in Israel. You're saying now, when they're not shooting rockets, they can now, actually come yeah, in. Obviously, yeah. When rockets are being shot, Israel, def- <laughs> they close the borders because, you know, you don't really allow people that are shooting rockets at you to come into your country for work, right? Are you, are, Luke, but you, in did you just times, say that? Can you say that? Like, I, I think that's like common sense. Have you ever heard that on uh, mainstream media? No. They, no. I, I don't know why okay. nobody said that. In the last conflict with Gaza, last month, right? We had we were reporting on the conflict here in Gaza, uh, here in Israel from Gaza. Rockets from Gaza actually fell on their own electricity lines that were inside Israel. Why are electricity lines going to Gaza from inside Israel? Well, you guessed it. Israel provides Gaza with power wow. and water. Yeah. And helps them out with a whole lot of and other things. And telecommunications and utilities, right. you name it. So it they all actually, comes from Israel. They actually cut out their own power by shooting rockets at Israel. Not only that, Israel allows tons and tons of humanitarian aid into Gaza. They have ever since they withdrew. They're sending aid into Gaza and allowing it to go into Gaza. And during the last war with Gaza, they decided, even during the fighting, because Gaza and the Palestinian people of Gaza are suffering so much, Israel decided to send a convoy into Gaza. Eight trucks made it in, and Hamas started shooting rockets at the crossing that was allowing the humanitarian aid into Gaza. A IDF soldier that was facilitating was injured from shrapnel. And they do this because they know that they can portray Israel in a negative light by sent by the world reporting uh conflict rocket shot and humanitarien aid was stopped into Gaza right well that's what they they, they ab- reported absolutely that, Luke. I remember it coming across doing. live they reported it hum- Israel stops humanitarian aid they don't say Israel stops humanitarian aid because Hamas bombed the crossing right I mean that sounds like some information that would be good to share one more thing I want to finish we got to wrap up here but um I found some statistics on on schools in Gaza. Yeah. In 2010, illiteracy among Gazan youth was less than 1%. That's really good. Yeah. According to UNRWA, with the UN body that uh, helps the hides the, missiles yeah, underneath Palestinians. Their... <laughs> yes. Also true. Different topic for another show. Oh, okay. There were <laughs> sorry. According to UNRWA figures, there are 640 schools in Gaza, 383 government schools, 221 UNRWA schools, and 36 private schools, and they serve almost a half a million children in Gaza. That does not sound like a third world country. They also have nine universities in Gaza. Okay, I want to mention one thing um, as we wrap up, and that is we don't belittle any of the suffering of the Gaza people because they do suffer. In the images that I showed, I pulled them off Google, the images that I showed at the beginning of the bombed out buildings and, and just terrible destruction, yes, they're most likely true. Right? And we know that some people And there are areas there are in people. Gaza that have been hit hard, yeah. uh, a lot of destruction. It is 100% the fault of Hamas and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad. But um, yes, the people of Gaza do suffer, but it's not what you think. It's not what you imagine. It's not what you see on Google. And it's definitely not what you see 
and mainstream media. So make sure you remember that. Guys, check out our source links in the description below. Make sure to subscribe. And in the meantime, be strong, be courageous, and be the voice of Joshua and Caleb in your generation. Hi guys, if you enjoyed the show, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. We also have tons more incredible content straight from Israel's heartland, which you can find completely free at joshuaandcaleb.com. If you're interested in signing up for a life-changing volunteer program in heartland, you can go to serveisrael.com. We host Christians from all over the world to help plant trees, harvest grapes, prune, and basically help farmers all over Judea and Samaria all while experiencing the land and people of Israel in a way that you're never going to on a 10-day tour. Just go to serveisrael.com to find out more information. Stand. Yes, I will stand.